Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Whistler Blackcomb, where today we are hosting the Canadian National Slope Style Championships. This morning, we will be starting off with the ladies, then followed up by the men in the afternoon. I am Dan in the broadcast booth today, bringing you all the coverage, and I am joined by the one and only Bruce Oldham. Bruce, how are you today? I'm absolutely excellent. It's a beautiful day out here in Whistler. The course is amazing. Rails are big, jumps are big, and I'm excited to see what these athletes can do. Absolutely. So just before we get into it, I just want to do a quick thank you to all of our sponsors that we have here. I'm going to quickly run through them here. Thank you to Toasty Supply, Southside Lodge, Thread, Sunbum, Hilton, the Whistler Blackcomb Foundation, Nestor's Market, Dublin Gate, Toyo Tires, 122 West, Airhouse, Momentum Camps, Head Sportswear, Beaverwax, Macuse, and Mountain Kids Outfitters. Without any of you guys, this would not be happening. So thank you so, so much. So we should be getting started soon quite quickly here. So we're just essentially waiting for all the riders to get into their position. Everything. So if my, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So you'll hear from us shortly when we'll be back. But do not go anywhere. The ladies will be starting any second now. So as you can see from the uh, the camera angle there of the course, it is a big, big course. This is on the black line of Whistler Blackcomb. These jumps are, these are Olympic sized training jumps. Bruce, is this the kind of thing that you'd expect to see on your World Cup circuit? This is absolutely the type of thing we would expect to see on a World Cup circuit. These jumps are massive. This is the biggest jumps in Canada that we have to offer right now. These athletes are going to be throwing down on a little jealous myself. I'd love to be out there hitting. Okay then, so there might have been a little bit of miscommunication there. Sorry if you can hear my radio chatter going on in the background. Um, we've actually, we're going to pick up with the third rider today. So we're actually going to take it up with Eliza, I believe. And if she comes right now, dropping in. So, Bruce, tell us what you see. Yeah, Eliza's starting things off with some great rail slides on the top two features coming into the first jump. This jump is very, very big for these girls. And she's coming with lots of speed in a really nice 360 mute grab. Yeah, really getting that grab there. That was really good to see. Keeping it super clean. Coming into this third rail feature with the flat bar. Nice front two. We'll be coming into this second jump switch. 
going for a nice big switch 180. Huge. A little slower than she thinks, but last jump with a nice 360 the other way. Oh, that was massive. You can really see from that camera angle how big that jump is. These guys are flying through the air. As we take a look at Eliza's rail game here. See that right foot forward, really getting that front two as we go into the jumps here. As again, like I said, they are flying through the air there. Nice to see from Eliza. So Eliza is skiing out of uh, Whistler, BC. She's part of our uh, performance team here. She's been absolutely killing it all year on the Canada Cup circuit. So Bruce, what does a competition like this mean to these athletes? What's it doing for them? Yeah, a competition like this for these athletes is super important. It's a chance to prove themselves against all the other athletes in Canada, show what they're made of, compete on probably one of the biggest courses they're going to hit all year, and also just get to push themselves and see, uh, see what they're able to do, especially on future yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Like we said earlier, this is a big course, probably the biggest course that a lot of these competitors have skied on this year. So, yeah, it's a challenge for everyone involved. As the judges and all the scorers get everything ready, we're making sure we're not missing a beat here. Everything is done properly. So I just want to apologize to Sylvia and Hunter for missing runs one of them. We will 100% make sure we get run two. So next to drop is going to be Avery Crume. Again, skiing out of Whistler. An absolute goat from the Crume family. Yeah, I'm really excited to see what you can put down this run. So this is an active terrain park right now. You can see all of these riders moving around. You can see that you know this is a busy park. Oh, and Avery is on course. Let's go, Avery. Picking things off with a great first rail and a nice straight slide on that second feature. She's coming into the first jump four, taking tons of speed. This is definitely one of the bigger jump features on the course. A nice 360 safety, just coming up a little bit short yeah, not, on that first jump. Not quite having the speed there for that. Last rail feature with a nice front two. She's keeping her run going, keeping it smooth the whole way through, doing what she can. Coming up. Oh! oh that was amazing. Amazing second jump from Avery. And a huge Misty 7. Wow, really kicking things off strong at the end of that run. So just taking, it again, another look at this top rail section here to give you guys can see how quickly and how much control they're going in with a nice front two there from Avery as we go into the jump. Is that a right bio seven or left bio seven? That's left bio seven, wow. Going big too. Going huge. As we get back up to the top of the course for the next competitor. Yeah, next up, we're going to have bib number 89, Gabrielle Din, skiing out of BC. So the weather today here is a little bit overcast, a little bit, you know, the cloud is coming and going. There is some sunshine, but what does that mean to the competitors, Bruce? Yeah, it definitely means a little bit more difficult uh, conditions. Obviously, the flat light can be a little bit hard to spot where you are in the air, but these girls are killing it. And right now we got Gabriella on course, cruising through the first two rails, doing a great job, coming to that first jump forward with the Scream and semen crossing those legs. That's great to see. Throwing in a little creativity on that first jump. Coming into the second rail with a nice front two. Taking some speed switch into this second jump. The big switch right five. 
Let's see what she can do on the last jump. With a beautiful oh, 540. That was lovely to see. To take a look at that top rail section again for Gabby. Again, going for that front two to get a switch into that second jump and then coming down for that last jump with a nice big left five. Great to see. Honestly, just seeing these guys complete a full run is a victory in my book on a course this size. So each of these competitors will each of these competitors will be getting two runs today. So it is the best of those runs that will score. So you know what? If you have a little bubble on that first run, do not worry about it. You get another chance to go again. So up next it should be bib number thirty, Ella Garrod. Skiing out a silver star. Her dad is a legend in the game. Yeah, absolutely. She's been killing it all year. Really excited to see what she can put down on this course. And she's on course. First rail with nice switch on to four. Coming into this second stall feature, grinding the other way, keeping it straight to forward. Coming into the first jump with a big right 360 mute grab. Keeping it super clean, just making it over the knuckle. Coming into that last rail feature on course with a big grind forward and coming in to the second jump. A huge flat three. That was massive, holding the landing. Yeah, awesome job. And then finishing off with a huge cork seven. So really, really good to see her flipping both those last two jumps. She'll definitely be looking for... Uh, Good score here. Yeah, absolutely. That was, yeah, absolutely put one down there as we look at that top rail. Just a straight slide, but it gets a set up for that second jump. But looking at the last jump here for that cork, you can really see how that head dips below that axis. The landing doesn't look like it was the cleanest. Maybe could tidy it up a little bit, for, but for the technicality of that run, that is very, very impressive. Yeah, one thing we're seeing is Ella is hitting all the jumps forward. She's spinning both directions, but she's m missing out on a uh, switch feature. Possibly just to up the difficulty of these jumps. She is doing some of the bigger tricks out here so far. So would that be a tactic that athletes use, Bruce, since you are an athlete? Is it a good idea to sort of get a nice, easy run and put that down first and then advance it later on? Absolutely. Depending on what your goals for an event are or if it's qualifying or finals. In qualifying, you definitely want to make sure you can put down a run that's going to be good enough to make finals. And in finals, you, want to, you definitely want to go for it, but you also want to make sure you put something down that you're confident with. And then second run, you can really, really go... Yeah, absolutely. So using Ella as an example there, on that rail, she just went to forward, but she could potentially do a front two to go to switch and then bump up a score a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. We know, we know she has good rails and we know she can hit jump switch. So we're going to be looking for her to boost some of these tricks in the second run. Yeah, absolutely. So again, there are these small holds and these little delays just to make sure that all the judges can communicate with each other and make sure that all the scoring is done correctly. As you can see, this is a very, very, very long course. So we just got to make sure that all lines of communication are dealt with properly. We also would like to thank Whistler Blackcomb themselves for all of the hard work that their park crew and event staff have done in making sure that this event goes as well as it has been going. So a big, big shout out to Whistler Blackcomb events crew and park staff. You guys are the goats. Yeah, this park is definitely, uh, I mean, the whole course itself is definitely one of the better ones. I and the jumps are pristine. Keeping it really, really nice. Get some sun this afternoon. Pokes out a little bit. Yesterday for qualifying, the weather was amazing. So we're hoping to get a little bit of that for the men's in the afternoon. It's definitely trying, Bruce. We can definitely see that it's trying to poke through those clouds. So hopefully the weather plays kind. You can see there in, in frame that little tent there. That is part of the judging crew. Big shout out to LV, who is on that judging panel. When your judges are as good as skiers as Lucas Viana, you know that you are in safe hands with the judging. Big shout out to the judges. Okay, then on course, we've got number 33, Anna Rose, skiing out of Quebec. 
Yep, coming into that second rail feature. Oh, front four. Yeah, very, very cool to see. One of the only girls spitting out of that second rail feature. So she definitely gets some bonus points for that. Coming into the first jump forwards with a big... Cork 9 Blunt. Perfect Cork 9 Blunt. Super awesome. Coming into this rail section switch, too. One of the only riders we've seen so far coming into this rail section switch with a nice switch on front two. Okay, coming up into the second jump switch here. Another big switch five, so she's really going for it. Oh, and another cork nine. Definitely one of the heavier runs we've seen so far today. Coming into this rail. Coming in switch. It's the first time we've yeah. seen someone hit it switch today. And when we say switch, we mean backwards. And with a really nice cork nine to finish it off. Was that both way cork nines there, Bruce? I believe it was. I believe it was, and flipping all the jumps and spinning switch. So definitely, uh, definitely a solid, solid run for Anna. Yeah, awesome to see that. So we're going to have two more riders in the women's here, and then we will complete the first run. Every competitor will get back up to the top and we will have another shot at this. So, Bruce, tell me about your year. How's the comps been going? Where have you traveled to? I've kind of been all over. Craziest place I went this year was China for a big air on Olympic Beijing. Uh, big air jump. Oh, no way. You got to hit the power plant? Yeah. That was sick. The power plant was pretty sick. But solid year. Lots of competing and super fun. So, for those that don't know, Bruce is on the Canadian Next Gen team. So, Bruce is probably one of the best up-and-coming skiers in Canada we have right now. So, Bruce is on the World Cup circuit. He's on the Noram circuit. Pretty much any competition that Bruce can get into, he will go and do. This man is an animal. Yeah, I, I'm definitely a fiend for competition. I'm actually a little jealous. I'm not out there on the course right now, but it's pretty fun to be in the booth today and uh, watching these guys get it. I'm sure we could find a bib for you, Bruce, and you can get out there and scan, sandbag it if you really wanted to. <laughs> Maybe I'll go out and I'll uh, forerun for Big Air yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. So, yeah, as I was saying, this is an active terrain park, so we don't have the best camera angles for you today for this broadcast, but they are as good as we could get and the safest positions we could be in. The rest of this train park is fully open for the public. So if you are in the sea to sky area and you, uh, you're a bit bored of watching it on the stream, come down and watch it live. We will be here all day. And honestly, it's way more impressive in person. We'll also be here tomorrow as well. So you want to see some guys send it on the jumps tomorrow? That's your day. Yeah, tomorrow is a big uh, day. Okay, on course, we've got Zoe. All right, Zoe, let's see what you got. Second rail feature with a nice back two coming into the first jump from BC. Yeah, doing it for BC again. Skis under Graham on the uh, Team BC team. Holding it together there with the 720. Grabbing tail, maybe a little bit looser than she wanted, but still going through this course with a nice front two on that last rail feature coming into the second jump switch left. Wow. Yeah, going massive there. Boosting that switch rodeo. And with a cork. Oh, oh just coming up a little short there. Yeah, that is a shame to see. But we can take a look at that top rail for sure. Yeah, absolutely. These riders are definitely pushing their limits. So things like this will happen. Oh, I've, uh, I've missed that. I've missed the replay on the rail there. So I'll apologize to Zoe. And, but we'll look at this last... That was the, the run before, yeah. That was Anna's Cork 9. That was absolutely... Why not watch that again? Okay, then we have got number bib 13. Evelyn is going to be the last female to drop for us. And off we go. Evelyn on course. Maybe coming up that first rail a little bit early, but holding it together on the second rail very clean. Coming into this first jump. 
with a nice cork set blunt. Locking in that blunt grab. Definitely one of the better grabs we've seen today. Super, super nice. And with a big front two out of the flat bar. Coming into the second jump. With a switch, Misty 9. Oh, and stomping that landing. With the mute grab as well. Very, very nice. And uh, right, 720. Okay, jump-wise, that was definitely one of the more impressive runs today. I'm really excited to see her put it down. Yeah, absolutely. As we just go and take a look at that rail there. Again, going for that front two, it sets her up really nicely for that switch. Yeah, absolutely. And that right... Seven at the end with the safety grab. Very, very clean, keeping everything together. Might have been just a bit of a boot tickle rather than the safety grab. So definitely a bit of room for improvement. But on a jump that big, on a trick that hard, I can grab my ski, so I'm not going to comment. <laughs> yeah, definitely room for improvement, especially on the rails. But these girls are definitely putting down some really, really crazy runs to kick off things this morning. Awesome. And that is going to do it for run one. We're going to step away from these microphones for two seconds here while we wait for all those athletes to get back up into that start gate. So do not go anywhere. We will be right, right back.
Okay, then. We are back. We're having some communication issues here in our little broadcast booth, so we're um, we're struggling to find out when uh, riders are dropping. So we'll try and get that all cleared up for you as best as we can. So I'm going to just straight out flat apologize to all of the athletes here in this women's heat. We are having real communication issues up here. So to Sylvia, Hunter, and Eliza, and Avery, I believe we've missed those runs from you. So a big, big apology. Rider on course, I believe... Um, big front flip. Which in becoming a little bit short, talking for But again, really getting that front two and then absolutely flying, going for that lead safety grab. Definitely a tickle on the ski, but she gets that grab as we go back up to the top and wait for the next rider. So yeah, again, like I was saying, we have had some real communication issues down here in our broadcast booth. So to Sylvia, Hunter, and Eliza, and Avery, I am really, really sorry for missing those runs of yours. Um, yeah, I am terribly sorry. So Ella has been skiing at Silver Star her whole life, thanks to her dad, Wade. Big up, Wade. Wade actually did my Air 3 and 4 course, and he passed me. So thanks, thanks Wade. So again, all of these delays is just to make sure everyone is all happy, everyone can hear everything, everything's good. Okay, so up next is Ella. We're in the 30 bib. Coming into the top rail right now, a switch on to forward. And a straight grind on that second route. Super clean through flying into the first jump. See what she's got for us. Nice right 360 mute grab. Solid on that mute grab as well, even tweaking it out. Really, really nice to see her holding that grab through across the rail. The nice straight grind to forward. This is what we saw her do last time. To the second jump. A huge flat three. Again. Huge flat three. See what she can do in the last jump. Another Seven. Nice. Maybe coming up a little bit short there. Maybe a bit more speed would have helped, but still sticks that landing as we take another look at some replays. Yeah, that was a great... I believe it was a little bit cleaner than her first... Two up. Four. Very, very clean. Work. Absolutely. 
be hit. Oh no, yeah. she got that landing. Tails maybe hit the the let the first blue line, but I'm okay with that. This is a big jump. Pretty intimidating. Yeah, absolutely. Next rider will be first. Great first. Okay, so actually, we've just been informed that 33 Anna Rose and Bib 43 Zoe are going to be scratched. So they've probably taken a little, little bobble in run one, and they're just not quite feeling themselves. When it comes to jumps this size and features of this high consequence, if you feel anything that's not right, it's just not a good idea to go. Isn't that right, Bruce? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So this is actually going to be the last run of the ladies. Back to nice back to you, Seventy. Yeah, super clean. Other way, front four, holding it together. Maybe a little bobble there, but really going for it here. Her second run. Absolutely. Big cork nine. Going, oh, and clean on the landing. Dumps, the landing. dumps a bit of speed coming into this first rail feature. Yeah, and one of the only maybe a little bobble on by making it all the way to the lane. He's just gonna play it. Yeah, definitely had some speed issues there coming off of that rail. Her first run score will. Yeah, absolutely playing it safe. Let's see if we can have a look at that little bobble there. She's just not quite lined. Maybe going a little bit slow. But yeah, really, really nice run from Evelyn there. Great to see. So... I believe, um, I might be speaking too soon as I've been doing quite often this morning, I believe that is going to be the end of the women's and we're going to take a little break here so the men can have some practice and get warmed up for their run. I'm just going to wait and confirm that for you all. Yeah, we're excited to see the contest going down this afternoon. The girls absolutely killed it. We're hoping the weather stays nice for the men. We saw the qualities yesterday. They are throwing down some really big trick, really pushing the limits. So I'm excited to see what Yep, absolutely. Again, I'm just going to take this second to thank all of our sponsors. We've got Toasty Supply, Southside Lodge, Thread, Sunbum, Hilton, Whistler Blackcomb Foundation, the Dublin Gate Airhouse, 122 West, Toyo Tires, Gibbons Whistler, Momentum Camps, Head Sportswear, Beaver Wax, McCoo's Whistler, and Mountain Kids Outfitters. Also, just as a really big thank you to Head Sportswear. Head Sportswear have donated a full Gore-Tex kit for men and for women, for the best riders of the weekend. So we just want to say a big, big thank you for Head for providing that gear. It's awesome to see companies as big as Head supporting this level of competition. Absolutely, and that's a great prize. Please. Oh, yeah, especially if you ski in Whistler, that Gore-Tex comes in clutch. Very, very handy. Okay, then, guys, so we are going to take a step, step away here. Um, we will be right back for the men's. Do not go anywhere. Go get a cup of coffee, a beer, depending on what time you are. You know, just get yourself comfy, and then we will be right back.
Okay then, if you are joining us on the live stream, we are just in a little break here while we wait for the men's run one. So we've finished the ladies' competition and we'll be starting men's run one probably in the next 45 minutes to 15 minutes. So you've got some time to go get a coffee, get a drink, get comfy, get ready for men's run one. You'll hear more from me soon. Do not go anywhere. Actually, while you have me here, I will take this opportunity to thank all of our amazing sponsors. Nesta's Market, Hilton Resort Spa and Whistler, Southside Lodge, Mountain Kids Outfit is McCoo's, Gibbons, 122 West, Airhouse, Dublin Gate Pub, Fred, Sunburn, Toasties, Beaver Wax, Blackfish Clothing, and Head Sportswear. Thank you all so much. And thank you to all of our officials and judges. You will hear more from me soon.
Check, 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 check. Just a quick mic check. One, two. Cool. Awesome. Like I said, ladies and gentlemen, we are just waiting for men's run one to start. We should be back on air roughly at 1 p.m. So do not go anywhere.
Good afternoon and welcome back to Whistler Blackcomb for the Canadian National Slope Style Championships. Um, if you were joining us for the ladies this morning, you would have seen that the weather was actually beautiful for a slope competition. However, if you are joining us now, you will see that that cloud has really come in and come in quick. So we're having a little bit of a delay here just to make sure every athlete can get all of their training runs in and just to make sure that the course is safe as possible for everyone involved. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this quick second to thank all of our sponsors. But before I go anywhere, let me introduce my co-commentator again, Bruce Oldham. How are you doing, Bruce? Absolutely excellent. The weather has turned a little bit, but still good enough. All these athletes have been killing it. I've been watching training. They are throwing down in these jumps for the conditions. And we are in for an amazing final. Yep, absolutely we are. I did see on that little break there, Bruce, that you went out and got some laps in yourself. How is the park? How, how's it going? Super good. The park was really, really fun. I did a couple laps. My little brother's actually competing in the contest, so I went and did a lap with him, gave him some pointers, and uh, watched him get after it. All the guys seem fired up, so it's going to be fun. Yeah, absolutely. That's kind of sick that you're coaching your little brother in this comp. That's fun. Um, I will say, though, Bruce, please, no biased commentary. No biased commentary. Absolutely. If anything, it's going to be harsh towards him. Don't be mean on your brother. Um, but while we have this moment here, while we wait for these athletes to get started, um, we're just going to thank our event sponsors. So Nesta's Market for donating all of the volunteer lunches. Um, I have had some wonderful sandwiches over these past couple days. So thank you so much to Nesta's. A big thank you to Hilton Whistler Resort and Spa um, for being a constant supporter of Freestyle Whistler over the years and for donating our comp office space for this event. Pretty much every competition that I have been involved in here with Freestyle Whistler, um, the Hilton have looked after us beautifully. Um, so thank you, thank you so much to Hilton for that. And thanks to our athlete t-shirt sponsors, Southside Lodge, ride more, spend less at Southside Whistler's a Whistler institution since 2003, serving the tastiest homemade breakfast and burgers in town. It's comfort food at its finest in a fun, old-style diner atmosphere. And Mountain Kids Outfitters shop premium snow and bike gear for kids from top brands like Burton, Helly Hansen, Patagonia, Spider, Troy Lee, 510, and many, many more. Big shout out to McCoo's, your go-to for sport. Um, big shout out to Kyle, the owner there. I used to work for him a couple of years ago, and he looked after me pretty damn good. He got me a couple pairs of goggles, so thank you, Kyle. So big shout out to McCoo's. Any accessories, outerwear, lifestyle clothing, adventure gear, anything that you need, you can get at McCoo's. They have Whistler's biggest selection of helmets and goggles, and I can tell you that for a fact. They are located right at the base of Whistler Mountain, so please do go check them out. Another sponsor of our athlete t-shirts would be Gibbons. Parties, people, places, it's what they do. Gibbons Whistler, always good times. You're pretty much guaranteed to find a Gibbons bar in Whistler because they are every bar. Go there, get a drink, you will have a good time. As they said, always good times. And 122 West, huge supporter of Freestyle Whistler, bringing mountain coastal harmony to your home with exquisitely curated home decor, furniture, artwork, and giftware. The name is inspired by Whistler's longitude at the base of majestic Whistler Mountain. Just going to quickly jump in there. Um, Adele, one of the uh, members of our board here at Freestyle Whistler and has an athlete in the club, Emma. She is actually the owner of 122 West. So Adele, thank you for your continued support. Absolutely. All the competitors and their families will receive 20% off this weekend. And Airhouse, huge supporter of Freestyle Whistler. Enjoy Freestyle Trampoline. I personally go to Airhouse every time I am in Whistler area to train myself, and it's an amazing facility. Parkour, skateboarding, gymnastics, high performance, skiing, snowboard. They got it all in Squamish. Another sponsor for the t-shirts is going to be Dublin Gate Pub. Let me tell you, I have sank many a Guinness in there. It is probably the best Guinness in BC. If you want a good Guinness, go to Dublin Gate. They are not going to let you down. Please make sure you are of age. <laughs> um, big thanks to our swag bag sponsors that hooked up all the athletes with some amazing items. A big thanks to Thread. Thread for the lanyard and the sunscreen, the lip balm holder, and all the wallets to athletes, which is saying because they've got loads of accessories. They're designed to be slim, simple, and stylish while allowing to keep all of your essentials with you at all times. So big thanks to Thread for giving them. Sunbum, thanks for the sunscreen, lip balms, and face sticks. We don't really need them today, but yesterday they were a huge help. Yeah, and just one more thing for Sunbums. I mean, I'm up on the glacier in Whistler most of the summers, and having the Sunbum up there is essential. 
Otherwise, you are just getting destroyed. And Toasty Supplies. Thanks to Toasties, a local Whistler company, for keeping our athletes' hands warm. They provide eco-friendly heat for all hours. And Beaver Wax. Thanks so much to Beaver Wax, a Squamish-based company, for hooking up the athletes with wax to keep them moving fast. For weather like this, we get a little bit of snow. Having the right wax, keeping your skis in top shape is definitely important if you want to make those jumps. And Blackfish Clothing in Function, the best custom clothing and headwear for businesses, groups, and events. Thanks for making our event t-shirts for the athletes and the judges. And I personally got a athlete t-shirt, event t-shirt, and it's pretty snazzy. So super stoked on that. Okay, then. We are actually just about to almost get things going here. Camera's going to that position for me. Um, so, yeah, we're going to have Aiden Mulderhill, your teammate, Bruce, is going to do our forerunner. What's it been like competing with Aiden this year? It's been good. He beat me at a one contest this year, first time, and he, he definitely made me feel it. I'm a little bummed, but... Uh, you beat him at the big <laughs> air, though, right? Like, you, you got your own back, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, he's, like, he's like my little brother. He hates when I say that, but uh, I've been skiing with this guy forever, and... Uh, really like been a huge part of uh, my progression and his progression has been working together. He helps me on trampoline. I help him with other things and it's really, really fun to compete against such good friends and just share trips and time and travel with everybody. Yeah, absolutely. I am very jealous of you guys. And we'll see what Aiden does here for his four running run, but the guy is one of the best jumpers I've ever seen and he has spent Tons of time on this jump line. If you go check out his Instagram, you will see some of the craziest tricks on Whistler Black Line you have seen in a long time. Yeah, absolutely. Even though it is a four run, he is still going to put on a show for us. I can guarantee that for you. Absolutely. So we're just waiting on the final judges' ready call to make sure everything is ready. Okay, then, I don't know if you can uh, overhear any of that radio chatter that's going on here. There is lots of communication, lots of open channels, just to make sure everything is A-OK. -okay. So we are just waiting to get Aiden going here, and then we will get into the competition. Yeah, from my understanding, we have a couple of athletes scratched today. I'm not 100% sure who exactly that is. I know Mitch Stevenson has been scratched from finals, and I believe Bryce as well. Um... Hopefully they are okay and we'll be seeing them later this spring, but uh, unfortunately they will not be riding today. Yeah, they had a bit of a, an accident yesterday, so we are sending them all of the positive healing vibes that we can, and we miss you there. Yeah, you're good for the moment. So, like I said, we're just going to... We we're in this wait here. We're having a little delay just to make sure every athlete is back at the top before we start going. So, yeah, we are just waiting on that final okay from all of the judges. The slope style is an interesting event purely because of how long this course is. So, you know, we have a small section of judges at the top there that you can see in camera frame, and then we will have another set of judges at the bottom. So we're just making sure that all lines of communication are good to go. Yeah, this is a split panel judging contest. So the judges up on that top section will be giving out scores for the top three features. The first rail, which Aiden just did a nice backslide on. The second rail, which is coming into right now with a 50-50, and that first jump you're going to oh, see. Oh, the big three on the knuckle. I like that style. Let's <laughs> see what he's got for us. With a huge cork three nose, holding it the whole way. Super, super stylish. And then the second set of judges will be judging these bottom three features you saw right there with Aiden doing a huge back six shifty out of that up rail. Coming into the second jump, with a nice 180, tweaking out the safety, making it look stylish. I'm expecting a zero spin from him here. Yeah, beautiful. Taking it deep. 
Such a fun, stylish run for Maiden. He's just having fun. Yesterday when we saw him four running, he was doing doubles, but he's just out here for a good time today. Yeah. Aiden's one of my favorite skiers to watch. Makes everything look super smooth, super easy. Holding that nose grab to infinity is awesome. Great style. And then the zero spin, taking off backwards and landing backwards. It doesn't look hard, but let me tell you, it is hard and scary. Absolutely. Definitely one of the harder tricks and uh, one of the more stylish tricks. But when you're going blind up a jump and landing blind up a jump, definitely could be intimidating. Yeah, absolutely. I can see that. Who's the first rider? Rider boy. Alright. Alright, so our first rider, bib number 10, rider Bartlett from Whistler Freestyle Performance Team is coming into that second rail. He is just keeping things nice and clean with his straight grind through that one feature, definitely not the most important feature on the course, but coming to this big jump with a dub. Oh, oh, just coming up a little short there. Yeah, unfortunately didn't have the speed he was looking for. It looks like he was trying to do a dub 12 mute and just came up a little short, had to go to 10 and just tag the knuckle. We'll see if he uh, tries anything on the bomb jumps or uses them as setups. Looks like he's just having fun with some core threes. Yep, absolutely. So this is going to be a throwaway run here for Ryder. The benefit of this event is it is a two-run event, so he is going to get another chance at this. Absolutely, and a lot of these riders are going to be going for some of their harder runs because they're looking to they're looking to end up on the podium here. So the chance of landing the hardest run you can think of on a course like this to do it twice in a row is is pretty hard. But most of these guys are going to be able to put down a solid run once out of the two laps they get. All right, up next on deck, we got bib number 24, Drew Christensen from Freestyle BC. This is his home court. He's got the advantage riding these jumps throughout the season. He had a great run in qualifiers. I'm excited to see what he puts on for us in finals. Okay, then. Okay, then, so up next, bib number 24, Drew Christensen. Like Bruce said, skiing out of BC. Yeah, coming in with a, what it looked like a nice switch to, oh, no, and oh. just getting caught up in the stall feature. Losing a shoe with the K-Fed. Uh, that's, a, that's a bummer for sure. I know he's going to be a little disappointed because that's definitely one of the features in the course that the judges have said uh, isn't as high of a priority uh, and you will see a lot of athletes just making it through with Mellor Chicks. Drew going for a uh, little bit of a step up on there and just getting caught on that snow. Yeah, absolutely. But the benefit, like we said on the last run, is you get two chances at this. So you know what? Clear it out of the mind. Forget about it. You get one more go at this. So um, you know what? It's not the end of the world. Shake it off. Come back stronger. Yeah, absolutely. And if I was Drew right now, I'd be using these last two jumps kind of as a as a, as a warm-up for my... Uh, my next run, doing the tricks I would be doing in my next run. Otherwise, you're going to be waiting at least an hour. He's just having fun with the cork threes. But sometimes the like the time in between runs, you haven't hit the jumps in like 40 minutes. The speed can change, so it's nice to do even setups for the tricks you're going to do. Yep, absolutely. Very nice cork three. Yeah, so cool. My favorite trick for cork three. Okay, so on course we have bib number 68. We got Gavin. Yeah, coming through that top rail clean. Looked like he made it all the way to the end. And a nice, looked like straight grind to switch on that top two. But yesterday he was the only athlete taking this first jump switch with the big switched up nine. So he's definitely getting rewarded for that. Looks like just not having the speed he wanted going to seven. He's still going to try to pull off a run here, though. 
upcoming switch into that second. Oh my God! <laughs> Just getting caught up on that on that last rail. Obviously, when you come out of a jump, not the direction you want to, and you're trying to improvise in such little time, things can go wrong. But power to Gavin for trying to put together a solid run, even after that first jump went a little bit wrong. He's okay. He's coming uh, coming down the course, and he too will be looking for his second run. Yeah, absolutely. These things happen in our sport. You know, the maneuvers and everything that these athletes are doing, you know, it takes a lot of training to make sure that they're all good for this. So, you know what? These things happen. Yeah, exactly. And it is interesting to note that we haven't seen a landed run yet. This is one a little bit due to the weather. I know some of the athletes can get intimidated by weather being a little bit off, but also due to the difficulty. All these athletes are stepping it up today. They're trying to put down harder runs. They're trying to improve on what they did yesterday. And we are going to see a little bit more, uh, I want to say crash scores, but not fully completed runs than we did yesterday. Yeah, absolutely. And again, you know, the, you know, the, the women had it nice this morning. It was nice and clear. There was no precipitation in the air. Nice and clear course. Like Bruce said, that has definitely changed this afternoon. All right, our next rider, Joel Ric Flair McNair. The man, the myth, the legend. Coming in with a nice switch two onto that top rail and a back two out of the second rail. He's been skiing really well all week. He had a little accident the other day on the knuckle, but he's all good. We're going to see him hopefully put down a run. I know how bad Ooh, he wants this. Just not enough yeah. speed there on that dub 12, unfortunately. Yeah, and I, one thing I noticed in training, too, is Joel was having a little bit of issues with that speed, and I think he was getting a little bit bummed out about that. It can be difficult because the other day the speed was really fast in qualifying, and a lot of these athletes were taking turns into the jump, and now today, today you have to... You really have to book it straight into that jump. I wonder, it looks like he might have lost a mitt when he fell. Oh, it's a phone. Oh, a phone. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's important. Absolutely. You can't be having that fall out of your pocket. Yeah. You have to get Uber Eats somehow. Absolutely. It's a good job he's found it, though. And Joel, too, will be looking for his next run. He really had a, he had a really good top section, and he was so close to that first jump, just maybe like half a foot too short. But again, still getting some practice in on the jumps, figuring out that speed for it. Yeah, exactly. Even if he's just doing straight airs with his phone in his hand, <laughs> he's uh, it's still going to be good for him to like get a feel for the speed because it will change uh, in between these laps. All right, our next rider, Henry Royval from Ski Acro, Quebec. Our first Quebec rider of the day for the men. If you guys are here live listening to it, you'll hear Jeremy Gagné, one of his good friends and the guy on the national team, commentating in French out loud. Henry is putting down an amazing jump for a rail run so far in the first two features, coming into that first jump with a nice dub 10 safety, keeping it super clean, just making it over the jump. Definitely not going as big as I think he might have wanted, but it's really good to see him making the jump. And that front six tail tap was very, very nice. Hopefully he got the knuckle there. Coming switch into that second jump with the switch dub nine. It just squeaking by. Yeah, holding it together there. Last jump, can he make it? Dub ten. Nice. Okay, wow. So really good run from Henry, making speed for all the jumps. The first athlete to land a full run today with good rails. And claiming it at the end, so I love to see that as we go back and look at this tail tap here. Yeah, he might have just missed the knuckle. Boosting. But oh, he's way above the knuckle. Yeah, but definitely add style points though. Absolutely. It's been taking another look at this dub twelve on the last. Yeah, very, Dub very 10, clean. excuse me. Very, very clean run from Henry, and obviously that's going to put him in first with the first landed score. He can off that run. I know he has bigger tricks, and I'm going to be waiting to see him do some uh, different grabs in those tricks. I know he's got better grabs than safety in all three tricks, and we're going to see him up that and improve his score for run two. So is it a good idea, Bruce, just to get a, sort of a safety run down as you would, something that you're more comfortable with to get a score, right? I think it depends on the weather for finals, but a day like today where the weather's a little bad, you know, the speed's tough, and we see a lot of athletes not make it all the way down the course. It's absolutely essential to get a run down. Like, if you can do a run with easier grabs and easier tricks that are going to make speed for the jump, absolutely do it, and then go all in on your second run. Okay, then, next on course, we've got bib number 93. we got Jacob. Jacob Derfault from Freestyle Ontario. Love this guy. Ski with him a lot back home. He's really, really good up-and-coming talent, and... Uh, Really excited to see what he can do today. His run yesterday was awesome, and he's really, really good on the jumps and the rails with the four and back two in that top feature. And uh, 
unnatural front four out of that second feature. So keeping it clean through the rails with a good rail trick selection coming into the first jump. Just not having the speed he needed. Just doing a cork seven, tagging the knuckle. I hope he keeps this run going because, like I said, there hasn't been a lot of landed runs so far. Obviously not going to be enough for the podium, but still good to get a good first score. Yeah, absolutely. Get a score down, learn the speed, have a practice on the jumps, get back up, do it all again. Yeah, exactly. And you'll see Jacob right here doing his setup tricks for his uh, next run. He's doing like the right cork nine and the switch cork nine, and we will see him in next run. When he does everything, he will be adding an extra flip and rotation to those jumps. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, me too. I saw him in training, and he was putting down some, some really good runs, so hopefully he can make it happen. Again, that camera angle just gives you a amazing view of how far these athletes are traveling through the air. Yeah, they are not small jumps at all. When you go by it on the chairlift, you're on the chairlift watching these athletes hit it, they are, they are up there in the air. They're flying. Rather them than me. Although, Bruce, I bet it's different for you. Sometimes, you know what? Sometimes I get scared, too. Sometimes <laughs> I look at it and I'm like, I don't believe that. I don't really want to do that today, but no, yeah, for sure. All right. George Friedman up next from Freestyle Ontario. This guy had an amazing run yesterday. I'm really excited to see his run today. He is one of the only athletes, maybe the only athlete I've seen doing double misties on the course here and doing both way misties. He's doing a dub misty nine in that first jump from qualies, unless he ups it. And it was really, really cool to see some athletes, you know, playing with different axes. So switch two back to in that first rail, coming into the second rail with a nice front four. So super clean through the rails. Not the hardest, but very, very clean. Very, very uh, well done. Well executed coming into that first jump. And a huge dub Misty 9. Oh, clean on the landing there. Yeah. So very smart from George. I know this is a trick he was doing, but a trick like a dub Misty is going to put you out farther past that jump and give you that extra speed to make the landing that you need. And it's nice switch to back to the other way on that second rail. And the right Misty 9 again. Back to back, both ways. Can he do it? Switched up nine on the last jump. Wow. Perfect from George. Top to bottom. Three-way spins. Two misties in both directions, which none of the other athletes are doing. And a very nice switched up nine on the bottom. I'm excited to see a score. So is that something that the judges are looking for, um, spinning every direction? Yeah, absolutely. So if for people that are new to freestyle skiing, the general rule is you have to spin in different directions on all the jumps. So you have four different directions, forward left, forward right, switch left, and switch right, which is taking off backwards on the jump. So you will see the majority of these athletes in finals, all the athletes in finals, you'll see them spinning three directions on the jumps. And one thing they also take into consideration is the different kind of axes they do in these tricks and grabs. It adds to creativity and technical difficulty and overall impression. If you are doing the same trick everybody else is doing, then you are going to get scored in that same group. If you're doing something different that nobody else is doing, it still has to be a difficult trick, but they're going to give you bonus points for doing something that nobody else is doing. Yep, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Going back to what Bruce said about the axes of rotation, you, you're you going to hear me and Bruce throwing out some terms that you think we're just making up words on the spot, stuff like bio, misty, cork. And then there are some weird grab names as well. Trust me, Bruce knows what he's talking about. I like to think so. I, I, I'm going to say so. I'm just going to take a quick moment here to shout out Coach Will Fossum from Freestyle Whistler, who unfortunately took a tumble the other day and fractured his collarbone. So he's watching this from home. So just letting you know, Will, we love you, and we can't wait to get you back on snow. Okay, up next, we got Bib 100, Landon. Yep, Landon from Freestyle BC. Awesome young talent. It's been really, really cool to see him crushing it this season. I'm excited to see him in finals. So switch two, back two on that first rail, coming into the second rail with a front four. A lot of athletes going for a front four out of that feature just to get a trick down and keep it clean. And he's coming into this first jump right now, forwards. Oh, my God, Landon. Wow. That was crazy. So first athlete to do a 1440 on that top jump. I know it's a big trick for Landon with a perfect 1440 safety. So he's going to be stoked. And he's coming in. Back forward and left candle is nice. He's coming into that second jump with a Going huge... Going to the bottom. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> yeah, that was amazing. Huge switched up nine and a 
big right court nine still. Wow, that was a wow. really, really good run from Landon. Yeah, what a run put down. That 14, talk me through that, Bruce. What is a double cork 14? Yeah, a double cork 14 is, <laughs> is a pretty hard trick. Uh, it's hard to wrap your mind around, but basically he is doing a double cork 10 and adding an extra 360 in the middle in that rotation. And it, it's really hard to get the wrap and the timing and the vision right in that trick. And like I said, he's the only athlete we've seen do it so far in that jump today. We will see more athletes do tricks like that, but very, very good run from Landon. I know he'll be uh, looking to up that last jump in his second run, which just with the right nine. It was really smart for him to get down a clean run with that right nine and a good grab at the end. But we are going to see him do hopefully a right double on that last jump and really boost his score in run two. And up next, we got my little brother, Cody Oldham. Very whoop excited whoop. to see see what he puts down today. He was having lots of fun in training. I know he's stoked to be out here, and I'm really excited to see what he can put down. This must be a really cool experience for you, Bruce, to be on this side, you know, not competing, but to actually watch your little brother compete. This, this doesn't happen a lot for you, does it? No, it doesn't happen a lot for me, and does definitely don't get to announce him uh, at least on a live stream very often. So, <laughs> so here we go. Let's see what it's happens. It's really cool. Yeah, he's coming into this first rail switch. <laughs> so coming in for a switch right four which looked very very clean back swap on that oh. front four okay so he's on one definitely the most challenging rail section we've seen up top so far coming into this first jump and going for the right or left 14 mute he literally just learned that last lap in training so he's really on one right now coming to the up rail Misty four out. One of the only athletes doing a Misty out of that rail. Cody's really putting it together right now with a big oh, switched up so nine. Clean, Bruce. And last jump, right double going. Huge. Going massive. Stop oh, it. Oh my what God. A run. Wow, he's got to be stoked. <laughs> you can see him at the bottom. That was definitely the best run I've ever seen him put down. So rising to the occasion, Cody. And Good I'm very coaching, happy. Bruce. Let's take a look at that Misty off the rail. Yeah, super nice. A little bit loose uh, coming out of it. I told him to clean that up yesterday. Clearly, he didn't listen. But that Dev 12 Japan at the bottom to the right, a natural direction, was amazing. Going big. And the 1440 mute yeah, 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 yeah. was beautiful. He just learned that this morning. So very, very stoked for him. And I'm excited to see his score. Yeah, absolutely. Well done, Bruce. Good coaching. I mean, I'm not going to give you all the credit, but you put some work in there, I'm assuming. I put a bit of work in, yeah, teaching these little hooligan how to do everything. Uh, I think our next athlete is Remy Aslan from uh, Freestyle Quebec. Powerhouse name in the free skiing world, the Aslans. Yeah, absolutely. And Remy is one of the athletes with some of the best rails I've ever seen uh, and really, really good style. His jump game is also very, very good as well. I'm expecting him to put down a really, really good run. All right, Remy, driving in. Just maybe coming off that first rail a little early, but nice front swap. Okay, not what he was going yeah, for there. Definitely didn't want that. He wanted the front four out of that for sure. Yeah, just getting a little caught up. That's all right. Like we said, he's got two runs, and he can use this as a good practice run for his jumps. Huge he's dub 12, though. Yeah, it was perfect. With the mute grab, was very, very nice. Switch into that up rail with a nice switch on front six, keeping it clean through that section, coming into the bottom jumps with a switch up 12. Oh, my God. Remy's really going for it on this run. And a right up 10 on the bottom. Okay, wow. Very, very good run from Remy. One of the better jump sections we've seen. Just maybe getting a little caught up on that first rail, so his score will not be ideal for this run. Yeah, absolutely. Just that little bobble on the second rail feature up top there, but he's landed everything else. So he has the framework here to go back up and correct that mistake and put down a really, really top run there. Yeah, absolutely. And that's going to build his confidence for the next run. He's got the jumps dialed. He knows he can do them. He just put them down perfect. So he's going to be coming into this next run with a bit of extra confidence. Bruce has just stepped off microphone a little second here just to go to the scorers and find out his brother's score. 
It's quite cute. Okay, then next ride up, bib number 58, Avery. Yeah, Avery Mack from Calgary Freeriders, putting out some really good runs yesterday. I'm excited to see what he can do today. All right, Avery Mack on course with the switch to Pretz 2 on that top rail feature coming in to, oh, the stall rail. Like, he's the only athlete I've seen hit that feature switch. He did it yesterday. Risky, um, definitely pays off, but you, as you saw, he just came off that jump or that rail a little early. Nice top 10 mute on the first jump, though, and we'll see how, if he goes for it. The cork four backslide out, very, very nice. Lots of style coming into this second jump switch with a switch dub nine safety. Very, very nice axis, super clean, super stomped. And a big right dub 10 to finish things off. So top to bottom overall, very good run. Just that second cheeky stall rail coming off a little early. Yeah, it definitely seems to be giving the riders a bit of a problem, that, that stall feature there. Is that a different feature than you'd normally see in a slope style comp, Bruce? Yeah, typically we don't see at a lower level very many features like that. Obviously, when you get up to the World Cup stage, you are going to see more things like shark fins, spines, stall rails. I know these kind of sound like crazy features, but they are. Um, but yeah, this is definitely something that's... It's not like a very, very hard rail feature, but if you want to do a technical trick on it, it's definitely going to be more difficult. And it's just one of the features that's like kind of a gimme, so you really want to make it through without messing it up. And... Just for those who uh, may not understand, if you do come off a rail early and not make it all the way to the end, grind the rail all the way to the end, it's going to severely hurt your overall score. So what is the sort of the criteria that the judges are looking for, Bruce? Yeah, judges are looking for amplitude, technical difficulty, uh, creativity. They're looking for execution and overall impression. And all that really means is they're looking for you to push the limits both in the difficulty of the tricks, the creativity of the tricks, spin all the directions that you need to do, and just keep it clean top to bottom. The overall impression also adds to like the flow of the run. So people are looking sketchy in between features, rails, maybe like not really comfortable over the jumps, then that's also gonna affect it. So Misha coming in to that second rail feature Really, really good top two rails. Just back to the second one, but very, very clean Took through the rail section. to get some speed there as well. He's going to go big here. Yeah. Misha's always oh. going big. <laughs> Watching him in big air and stone him. Guy loves to take some extra speed in those jumps with a beautiful 1440 safety. He's really, really good at that dub 14. Coming into this second jump switch, looking for a switch dub 9 or switch dub 12. Switch dub 9 safety. Very nice. Very clean for Misha. Last jump with the right double cork. 1080, 1260. Oh. Let's go, Misha. Very, very good run for Misha. That was clean top to bottom. Big claim at the end there. I love to see that. He's got to be happy with that one. Yeah, absolutely. I, the only thing I would say is maybe the difficulty on that last third rail was a little bit down, but he is really, really pushing it on the jumps, and that was a very clean run top to bottom. Yeah, well done, Misha. Yeah, well done, Misha. We're looking for your second run. I know you can put more out there, so I'm excited to see it. Okay, then we are into our final six riders of one, run one here. So next in the gate, bib number 88, Ryder Hennessy, skiing for the uh, Freestyle Whistler performance team. We are just on a little wait here to make sure all the judges are A-OK -okay with everything. It takes a village to make these events work. So just a quick shout out to every official judge, volunteer. You would be amazed at how many people go on behind the scenes to make this stuff work. So from the bottom of our hearts here at Freestyle Whistler, thank you all so, so, so much.
All right, Ryder Hennessy on course from Freestyle Whistler Performance Team coming that first rail, keeping it clean, making it all the way to the end. And a nice front four out of that stall feature. Yeah, really nice front four there from Henny. Yeah, super clean. Coming into the first jump forwards with lots of speed, I hope. Yeah, tons of speed. Perfect up 14 safety from Ryder Hat. And I see that was a very, very good first jump trick. Like I said, we are going to see more of these athletes doing 1440s out of that top jump and just going down on the front six out of the flat bar. He gets right back up, though, so he's okay there. Just lo loses his balance a little bit. Yeah, it looks like he, he set maybe a little bit too much spin for how much yeah, airtime he had. Follow. Unfortunately, he will be looking for his second run, but the top section was very, very nice. Our yeah. next rider after rider is going to be Destin Swift. Destin is a really good friend from Freestyle BC. Hey, he man. has been absolutely That's killing it this season, and I'm really excited to see what he puts down. He had an amazing run yeah, in the qualifiers, yeah. and... Destin's just, like I said, he's been killing it all year, so I'm excited to see what he puts down. Yeah, absolutely. He's one of the, uh, he's a great skier to watch, to be honest with you. Very aggressive in his <laughs> style, and he takes charge of that course, and I'm a big fan of that. Yeah, as he should. And the weather has cleared up a little bit here for our athletes. It's not snowing right now. A little bit of flat light, a little bit gray, but overall pretty good. All right, Destin is on course with uh look like a switch two to forward on that first rail. Making sure he's putting something down with the back two out of the second rail. Super clean through the top section. Definitely taking it easy, but like we said, there's not a lot of land so far in this first heat, so he's looking to put something down. And a nice 1440 safety. Wow, Destin, super, super clean. Love to see it coming into that flat bar with a front six out. Very stylish, very stomped. One of the cleaner front sixes we've seen today. Yeah, looking very clean here as he makes his way up to the second jump with the switch dub nine. Yeah, holding safety through the whole way and coming in to a right dub ten on the bottom oh, jump. Oh, he's put a run down. He's going to be very happy with that. Yeah, let's go, Destin. That was a really, really clean run top to bottom. Like I said, maybe a little easy on the first two rail features, but it is first run, and he's looking to put something down, and he absolutely did that. And he definitely upped the empty on that third rail feature there with the six off. Yeah, yeah, very nice six off. One of the cleanest ones we've seen today. And holding it together with that right dub 10 safety oh, perfectly at the bottom. Holding that safety almost till his fingers fall off on the landing there. Yeah, yeah, very, very nice. I'm excited to see Destin's second run. I know he can up some of those rails and put down the jumps even better. All right, our next rider is Jude Oliver, Whistler Development Team. Little mini shredder. He's absolutely been destroying it this year, doing triples. Tons of crazy tricks. Is he the youngest competitor in the group? I'm not sure, but I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, he, yeah, Jude is one to watch for the future. Absolutely, yeah, and he's just been getting better and better, especially this year taking off. And uh, you can see the confidence that comes out of these kids when they start doing their first big tricks and they start to get the feel for it. And Jude has definitely been doing that this year. I mean, look where he qualified. He's up there like fourth highest overall for the scores from yesterday, so. He's doing good. I had a little uh, chat with his uh, coach, uh, Fritzy, legend, shout out Fritzy. And uh, you want to keep an eye on this one because he might be throwing three-way dubs. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Which I wouldn't be insane. surprised if he does a triple. <laughs> Who knows? Do it, Jude. Do the triple. Do it. Do it. If not today, we got big air tomorrow. So I expect to see some tricks like that in big air Absolutely. Tomorrow. Okay, Jude on course now. Switch to back to on that top feature. Super clean. With a nice back two, lip on back two in that stall feature. So making it through all the rails very clean. And coming into the first jump. With a huge. Oh, beautiful. Was it a dub 10? Or sorry, dub cork 7? Either way, very, very clean. Back four was very, very clean. And he's coming in it to the second jump with a huge switch dub nine as well. Going big. Jude is stomping this run right now. And a right dub ten at the bottom to cap things off. Very, very oh, clean. Oh, yeah, Jude. He's happy with that one. Well done, bud. Yeah, Jude is absolutely stoked on that one, as he should be. It was a very, very good run 
top to bottom, super clean on all the features and all the jumps. So he's definitely going to get rewarded for that. Just to let the audience know at home, um, Jude is 14 years old. So he is doing these jumps that are the same that the 20-year-olds are doing, and it's amazing to see this level of skiing coming from a kid. Yeah, the 14-year-old is in senior nationals, so crushing it. Okay, then, as we go back up to the top here and get ready for the next athlete to drop. Number 84, Ty Cargus. Yeah, Ty Cargus out of uh, Calgary Freeriders. He's been killing it all year as well. There's lots of really talented athletes in this group, but Ty has definitely been on one this season, and he put down an amazing running qualifiers. So looking forward to see what he does this contest, this run, these two runs. He's got good rails, good jumps. He's overall great skier. As you can see from the live stream there, the like, crew of people hitting that side hit. This is an active terrain park that we're holding this competition right now. So thank you so much to Whistler Blackcomb and the Whistler Blackcomb events team for all the fence line, giving us this section of park. We really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah, they gave us the best section of park. And if it was another section of park, I would be riding that section of park instead of announcing. So, <laughs> um, Well, it's great that you could join us, Bruce. So thank you for uh, putting it on that section of park. Yeah, exactly. No, it's very, very awesome for the riders. And the jumps are big for some of the athletes, but it's very, very good for them to get used to pushing themselves on courses like this. Okay, then 84, Ty Cargus on course. Coming in with the switch two to forward, maybe a little bit off early on that first rail. The judges are right directly beside it, so they will notice that. The back swap front four and that nose tap with the knuckle were perfect. Yeah, though. style points for the nose tap. For sure. And a very nice dub tan mute. Super stylish, super clean. Opting to do less spins than some of the athletes doing a 14 on that first jump, but making it super clean and holding the grab really well throughout the whole trick. They will reward that. And the back four off top rail was awesome. And, oh, just maybe not getting the flip he needed on that switched up nine. But finds his feet on the snow, which is always good to see. <laughs> and stomps the next jump. So no worries there. Going to put that down. Um... Maybe cleaning up that first rail and that second jump, he will bump up his score for run two. But overall, good start. Nice to put down a run and, you know, get in the headspace of it. Yeah, absolutely. This is run one of two. Every single athlete will get a chance to go back up to the top and do it all again. Aren't we lucky? Yeah, we are super lucky. I mean, we have two athletes left, but we've already seen some amazing runs. So I'm really excited to see everybody go back up for run two because... I mean, these kids are killing it. They're putting down some really, really crazy runs. Absolutely. This level of competition is very high, so it's amazing to see that the next generation of up-and-coming Canadian skiers is, you know, they're keeping the level high, Bruce. They're going to be chomp they're <laughs> they're chomping at be your coming. heels, man. They're going to be coming for me. There's lots of talent. It's a talent-filled field, and, uh, yeah, Whistler's definitely home to a lot of those, those talented kids. Speaking of that, up next is bib number 78, Mateus Heslop. Yeah, Whistler local. Whistler local. Came through the Freestyle Whistler Club, is now skiing for Freestyle BC. Very, very good. He's been doing some crazy tricks this season. Big tricks, big spins. Um, I think he, I thought he qualified first overall, but I guess he underqualified second yesterday. So he'll be looking to take home a uh, podium medal today. So very clean first couple rails. Yeah, very tech on that second rail, though. Yeah, definitely the hardest rail trick we've seen through that section. And coming through with a nice 1440 safety grab. Pulling it together, very clean. Coming into the last rail feature, just the back four, so making sure he's keeping it clean and getting through that section in one piece. He's known for doing some big jump tricks, which we are going to see here. Switched up 12 to the right, and he's got the last left trick with a big left up 12 mute, stomped it. That was a really, really good run for Mateus. Some of the most difficult jumps we have seen today, if not the most difficult jump line we have seen today. Uh, and very, very clean rails. It didn't seem like he was holding back there. Would you say that would be a safety run, Bruce, or is he going no, Mateus, all gas, no brakes? Mateus is going for it, yeah. yeah all he gas, definitely no wants to win, yeah. Damn right. And you'll see somebody like Mateus here who's like definitely going for uh, a podium at this event or a first place at this event. He's got two runs to put down his hardest run. He's not going to put down a safety run. He's going to he's gonna try to put it all out there and take home a first. Got to respect it. Respect the sand. And then our overall leader from qualifying yesterday, Malcolm Ferris, bib number 29, up next. Big shout out to Malcolm Ferris, our only competitor coming from the province of Nova Scotia. So, well done, buddy. You're doing your province proud. <laughs> yeah, this guy's absolutely insane. You'll see his first jump. 
We'll see what he does today, but his first time he was doing an f- amazing dub 12 bond, grabbing at the very end. It was one of the nicest dub 12s I saw all day, if not the nicest. And he's got a really, really crazy run on the bottom two jumps as well. So looks like a lip two on that first rail, maybe coming off a little bit early, but it's hard to tell from this angle. And then the back swap to the nollie three. So I, I feel like that rail section wasn't quite what he was looking for, but we'll see when he puts down on the jumps. So dub 12 blunt, like I said, super clean, super stomped, making it look really good. One of the more difficult grabs we've seen today. And coming in to the up or to the flat two with the switch two, just coming off early, not getting the speed he wants and falling over. So he's going to be looking for a second run. Yeah, absolutely. Like we keep on saying, he is going to get another chance here. He's going to get back on that lift, forget all about this and make his way back for his second run. Yeah, and he's a competitor. He'll be able to put down a run under pressure. Yeah, we can just see him coming off that rail a little earlier and just getting a little hung up. That can happen as we go back to Mateus's dub 12, because why wouldn't we look at that again? Yeah, that was, a, that was a beautiful dub 12 mute, and that is his wrong direction of spinning. So showing that he can do it all directions. When Bruce says wrong direction of spinning, every athlete has a preference as to where they're going to be going. So, for example, my preference is I like to spin to the left. For Mateus, I know he likes to spin to the right. Everyone is different. Try it at home. Stand up. If you were just going to spin a 360, where would you go? Okay, then. It looks like we are already straight back into it with Ryder. Yep. Ryder Bartlett from Freestyle Whistler Performance Team. Coming into that first jump with a huge dub 12 and just washing out. Maybe a little bit too big and a little bit too much rotation on that double cork 12. He will, uh, he will be looking to have some fun on these bottom jumps and just enjoy the last lap of the day. Big cork 3. Okay, then next in the gate is bib number 24, Drew Christensen, again skiing for BC. Yeah, I'm excited to see Drew's second run. We know he's going to put down something good. Top rail looked perfect. Coming into that second rail feature, yeah, beautiful k -fed. That's where he got hung up last lap, just catching his ski on the snow. He's coming that first jump forwards. The nice dub 10 safety, stomping it, taking it deep as well. And he's coming in to this last rail section with a back six. So very, very clean back six. Good rails. Good first four features coming in to this second jump. Big right nine. Oh, and just can't hold on to it. Switch. Ah, oh, that's a bummer. It was very, very close. He just kind of got caught on his edges there and could not hold it together coming out of that second jump. But if we look back to our replay here, this back six was beautiful. Super clean, hands in the pocket, going over that knuckle. And then, yeah, just unfortunately, just washing out there on the switch nine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just like a tiny, tiny bit of rotation he was missing and couldn't hold on to it. All right, up next we have Gavin McManus from Freestyle on... Ontario, bit number 68. Gavin, Joel. Gavin might have scratched, so Joel is on course for his second run. Ric Flair, McNair, making it clean through the top sections. 
coming into this first jump. Last time he had a little bit too, uh, didn't have enough speed. So hopefully he's got enough speed this time. Just squeaking around. Yeah, let's go, Joel. Yeah, he had the speed that time. And Joel is definitely one of our older, more uh, advanced athletes in this course. So it's good to see him putting it together the second run. With the switch to back forward, out of that last rail future, super good. Oh, and just, wow, that was really, really lucky. I'm surprised he's still on his feet going for the next jump after that. That was insane. Just did not have enough speed for that switch sub 12. Maybe washed the takeoff a little bit. That was scary. I'm glad he's okay. Yeah, I'm glad he's okay after that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and made it to the next jump. The switch two back four on this flat bar rail section was very nice. Super clean. It really just looks like he uh, he did not have the speed and the takeoff he was looking for on that second jump. So that's going to be two crash scores for Joel. Again, it's unfortunate, but it is part of our sport. Accidents do happen, crashes do happen, bobbles do happen. Um, it just makes the guys and the girls that put down full runs even more impressive. Yeah, exactly. It's so hard to put down a run of this difficulty on a course like this. You have so many features, you have so many different difficult aspects that you have to put together all at once, and it's a lot to think about. It's a lot to do, and you know these athletes are putting down some of their hardest runs to, to win the event here, so... It's bound to happen. Yeah. When you push the limits, sometimes the limits push back. <laughs> exactly. Next rider in gate number three. Yep. Henry Royal from Quebec. Ski Acro Quebec. Excited to see Henry's run. So we are just waiting to make sure all the judges' scores and everyone is ready. Yeah, sometimes it takes the judges a little second to get the scores all together. Obviously, they have to go between the two sections of judging and compile the right score for the athlete. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but again, we would not have this competition without them. So to the judges. Oh, and we are off. Yeah. Henry, clean through the first rail. Clean with the second rail, the K fed on the second rail, but tucking into that first jump, making sure he has tons of speed with a nice dead 10 safety. So keeping it clean. I believe he landed his first run as well, super clean. So he's going to look to up things this run with the front six, he getting the tail tap that time out of that second last rail and coming into the second jump with a nice switched up nine on that kind of wobbly cork axis and a Big right dub 12. 12. Yeah, on that last jump. Upping that last jump, I believe he just did a right dub 10 the run before. So Henry really going for it, putting down two good runs. That's really, really awesome to see. Yeah, it's great to see that he can take that first run, take the confidence he got from it, and then expand it and make it better. Yeah, no, and it, I mean, it's really, really uh, important to see or important for these athletes to be landing runs at these events and landing two is a huge confidence boost going into the next season. Up next, we have Jacob Derpo from Freestyle, Ontario. Bib number 93. And that's consisting of right or left three to start the score in the event run. All right, Jacob on course. Rider on course, mate. Coming in that first rail section. Switch two, back two. Coming in to that, ah, that, that, that stall rail. Not what I think he wanted, but let's see if he can make up for it on the jumps. With a big dub 12 mute, super clean. Jacob's definitely one of the stronger jump athletes in this contest. So 
he can make up for that f- that second feature with his drums and the rest of his run. The switch to ah, uh, just not what he wanted on that on yeah, that it last round. Yeah, looks like he came off a bit short there, Bruce. Is that going to be a speed thing or? Yeah, a little bit of speed and a little bit of just not landing centered on the rail, and didn't make it to the landing, just bouncing off the knuckle. So. So, yeah, just taking another look at that bobble there. Yeah, just coming off early. It looks like he wanted the pretzel to get the uh, bigger spin off that, but, yeah, just didn't quite happen for him, unfortunately. And then, yeah, just taking the opportunity to turn. Yeah, and I believe his first run wasn't landed as well. So, not the, not his day, but it happens to the best of us. Shake it off, come back next season even stronger. Yeah, exactly. All right, our next rider is George, bib number 76 from Freestyle, Ontario. He had a really good first run, super clean, uh, super unique with the double misty and the on that misty. Uh, like I said earlier, one of the, I think the only athlete other than Joel today doing misties on this course. So really, really good run from George. I'm going to look for him to up the rails and try to clean up the jumps. The jumps are pretty clean, so there's not too much to clean up, but mostly just upping the rails. All right, George, dropping in for a second run. Let's see if he can make an improvement on that first run. Four on, back two on that first rail. Very clean, very nice by George. And just getting caught up on that second rail. So not going to be improvement on his first run score. However, he is going to have fun. He already put down a great run today, so he's got a lot to be stoked with. Doing the double misty anyways. Oh, we'll take another look at that when we finish the run here. Yeah, this guy's crazy. And then the switch to back to out of that second rail. Looks like he's just going for it. Nah, just taking it easy on the last jumps. He knows it's not going to improve on his first run score. And he had an amazing first run, so he's just having fun out there. Great contest, George. We can't wait to see more coming from you in the future. Absolutely. As we take another look at that double bio there. Yeah, very, very nice. Just squeaking that one around, but he did get it around. It's a bit closer than I thought, but yeah, he puts it down to his feet. And then, yeah, give us a nice stylish straight out with a nice blunt grab at the end. All right, our next athlete from Freestyle BC, Landon. Bib number 100. 100. Yeah, we're excited to see what Landon puts down this run. All right, Lando's on course with a switch to back to. Already cleaner on that first rail than the first run. Coming into the second one with a front four, a natural front four. Good job, Landon. Very clean through the top section coming into the first jump. And he's going with the 40 safety. Clean landing as well. I'd love to see it. Yeah, Landon's really made an improvement on his jumps this year and really showing what he's made of out here, doing these big tricks. And the back four still grab out of that up rail, so... Very cool to see him adding grabs off these rails with a big switch up nine on jump two. Shaping up to be a great run from Landon. Let's see if he can put down the last jump. Big right cork seven. Maybe missing the grab he was wanting because the first run he grabbed stale and went to nine. But overall, great run from Landon and great performance at this contest. Yeah, super clean, super stylish. Landon is known for that. And yeah, awesome to see a run put down. Does he get the tail grab off that front four? Yeah, he absolutely did. Sick. Yeah, and you look at this last jump here, just... Looks like he just missed a grab and didn't quite go to nine. So, but overall, great, great contest for Landon. And up next, we have Cody Oldham. Is that your brother, Bruce? Yeah, it is. Cody put down a great first run. Uh, 
just a couple little little bobbles here and there, not the cleanest overall impression. I feel like you're being overly critical. A little overly critical, yeah. but I'm really looking forward to his next his next run. He got a sixty or seventy something on his first run, seventy six, I believe. So we know he can up that and he can clean up this run a little bit. But I know he's going to be stoked. He definitely put down one of the harder runs he's ever done. So switch four on that first rail. With the back swap and just messing oh. up that, that second rail. So this is not going to be an improvement on his first run. Again, that rail definitely seems to be uh, catching a couple, pe couple of people out today. I'm going to the absolute moon <laughs> there, Bruce. Oh, my Holy. God. Perfect up for Teed Muke. Again, like I said, he learned that just this morning. So he doesn't care. He's going for it anyways. With a big Misty 5 over that rail. And coming to the last jump with a switched up 9. Japan, oh, oh my God. God, just Come not going it. fast enough and catching that knuckle. He's one of the toughest kids I know, so he'll bounce off, off of that like no problem. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even sweat it. But uh, definitely, definitely just going for it. Yeah, you can see he's already walking up, grabbing yep. his stuff. He <laughs> he's he's, he's standing up. He is okay. He's picking up his skis. Um, these things happen in our sport. It is an extreme sport. Um, all these athletes train day in, day out. For scenarios just like this. Yeah, and when you have an older brother that likes to beat you up, you learn how to take falls. So Cody's a tough kid, and he'll be up fine. And he'll, he'll be uh, skiing around this afternoon. Nothing like a bit of brotherly love there. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm stoked for him. His first run was really, really good, and that first jump was uh, amazing this run. I know he's going to be happy with that. So on to the next athlete. Bib number 16, Remy Aslin from Ski Acro Quebec. All right, Remy on course. See if he can make an improvement on his first run <laughs> with a really, really clean first rail and a nice back to out of that second rail. So far, so good for Remy Aslan. Huge dub 12 mute, super stomp, super clean. Loving the style coming from Remy. And switch on front six out of that cannon rail. So very, very good through the top section of this course. Two jumps to go for Remy. Switched up 12 on that second jump. Reaching for that landing. Yeah, and a big right dub 10 on the bottom jump. So very, very, very good run from Remy. Top to bottom, clean. All the jumps were landed. All the rails were stomped. Um, that's definitely one of the better runs we've seen today. Yeah, he was claiming that in the uh, the gate there in the uh, finish crowd as he finished there. So yeah, he's definitely happy with that one. Yeah, for sure. And he's one of two or three athletes we've seen do a switch up twelve today. So on that the switch up twelve on that second jump will definitely boost his score. Our next rider is going to be Avery Mac from Calgary Free Riders. Bib number fifty eight. All right, let's see what Avery can put down for us this run. Again, we don't have the best view of this top rail feature from our camera positions, but this is an active terrain park, and Blackcomb Park is probably one of the busiest in Canada here. So we're very thankful for Whistler Blackcomb and the Whistler Blackcomb events team for putting this on, as well as all of our sponsors and all of the organizing committee. Thank you so, so much. Yeah, they've done a great job this weekend. Just waiting for Avery Mack to drop in here. All right, coming through that first rail section clean, making it to the end of that first rail. And ah, just 
front swap to forward on that stall feature. Not what he wanted. He's going to have to really make up for it for the rest of this run. Yeah, just a big cork seven, not go having the speed he needed. Knows it's not going to be uh, an improvement on the run that he is looking for. We expect him just to have some fun, show some style like that back four, back slide. Very clean, very cool. Super stylish trick there with the one foot on the rail. It's great to see. Yeah, and a nice big switched up nine on the second jump. And a cork five on the last. Super styly. Yeah. Nice backslide, as we can see there. So the one foot in the air, very difficult to hold your balance. Very impressive. And then, yeah, a nice, nice, smooth and stylish 540 to finish off the runner and his competition. Yep. All right. Run number two for Misha. Dave number 12 from Ski Acro, Quebec. Misha has been killing it all year. Like I said earlier, he's got some really, really nice double cork 1440s. He was showing off in his first run. And I believe he put down a really good first run. So he's going to be looking to up his second run, maybe improve on a couple of those rails and just stomp the jumps again, do what he does on the jumps. So super clean through that first rail. Looked like a back or a forearm back two and then uh, unnatural two out of that second rail. So very, very clean through that section coming into the first jump. Yep, took him to get, to get that speed to make sure he clears that knuckle and goes massive. Yeah, so already improving that first jump. Uh, last one was a double 14 safety. This run, double 14 with the mute grab, trying to lock in that mute grab. Nice back four off the up cannon coming in to the second jump with a switch dub 12. So upping the second jump as well and coming into a right dub 12 on that last jump. Okay, Misha, very, very good run. Big improvement on first run score. Big improvements there. Just potentially missing the mute grab on the first jump. However, I'll have to see it back. But, I mean, very, very good run for Misha. And definitely improved on uh, the last two jumps. And really pushing it on the first jump. Yeah. As you take another look at that right side double cork 12 as he finishes off his run there. Yeah, that was super stuff. That was perfect. Textbook. Okay, we are now down to our final six riders of the day. For those of you that have been with us this morning since the women's runs, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, absolutely. All right, our next rider on course is going to be Ryder Hennessy from Whistler Freestyle Performance Team, bib number 88. We're looking for him to put something down and, you know, show us, show us what he can do. Show the hometown crew what he can do. Right, rider on a course. We got a rider on course. Switch two to forward on that first rail. Could be a clean, making it through. A nice prompt four out of that second rail. So keeping it clean. I'm still giggling at your rider on course joke, Bruce. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Trying to give him something to work with here. And a huge dub 14. Massive. Just about holding on to that landing, going to the absolute bottom blue line there. Yeah, and. It's hard to tell whether he front hand touched or not, maybe a little bit. And I don't think that was what he was looking out of looking for out of that second rail with the front two. Um, just a little loose on the jumps here, but really still going for it with the Ooh. right depth ten on the bottom. Wow. Yeah, Ryder's out here to to you know, put down a, a big run and end up on that podium. Absolutely. So he's he, going for he's it. He's put on a show for us today, absolutely. Yeah, and that was one of the biggest fourteen forties we've seen on that jump today, so Great stuff from Ryder. Definitely think he was looking for the front four, for the the, uh, the third rail there, but he's ad he adapted. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. I mean, at this level in finals, most of these athletes will not be looking for a front two out of that rail. It's just not going to be difficult enough to cut it for them. So, little bobble, but still put down a solid run. Hey, these things happen. All right, next rider on course is Destin Swift 
from Freestyle BC, bib number 72. Let's see what he puts down. I think Dustin can... Dustin's one of the athletes that can pull this off, so I'm excited to see it. Switch two, back two on the top rail. Unnatural back two on the second rail, keeping it super clean. Coming in this first jump forward, going for the 1440 again, I hope. Yeah, perfect. Going huge, stomping it out. You can tell he's been in the gym, squatting those big weights. And a nice front six out of that last rail section again. So Dustin's really putting down a good run right now. And a big switch up nine on jump two. Coming into the last jump, looking for the unnatural dub. Oh, dub 12 mute. So already putting a big improvement on run one. You can tell he's super stoked. Very, very good run from Dustin. I wouldn't be surprised if that's one of our top scores from the day. As we go back and look at Dustin's rail game there. Yeah, perfect front six. Super clean. So clean. Yeah, even adding a little shifty super style in there. And the last jump, the run before he did dub 10 safety or dub 12 safety. So adding that mute grab is going to improve his score for sure. The difficulty of grabs matters. Okay, then up next, hometown hero wearing bib number eight, Jude. The 14-year-old absolutely keeping up with the big boys here. Going punch for punch with them. It, it's it's awesome. Yeah, young gun on, of course. Excited to see Jude's second run. So just before Jude drops here, I'm going to take a quick moment to shout out Head Sportswear um, for donating a full core Gore-Tex kit. So it's going to be one man and one woman for the overall rider of the weekend. So keep an eye out for that. Let us know who you think. And then again, a big, big, big thank you to Head Sportswear. Goats. Yeah, really providing some uh, exciting prizes for these athletes on top of what they are already getting. All right, we're going to get Jude on course here in a second. Yep, just making sure all the judges have everything they need to make them make themselves ready for the next rider. So these yeah, things can take a second. Especially when you have a really good run like Destin's last lap. It takes a while from this score and figure out where to put it because Destin put down a really, really good run. But here and goes Jude. Yeah, and Jude's putting down a really, really good run too. Four on back, two, and a front four out of those first rail features. Very clean from Jude. And he's going, I believe that was a trip Triple. 10. Triple. I believe he just did a triple cork 1080. So not the same amount of spins as a 1440, but he did go over his head three times. So very high difficulty for Jude and the only athlete doing that today. Yeah, I was going to say that must be the first triple we've seen today. Yeah, and a switch dub 12 on the second jump. Coming into the third jump with a right dub 10. Oh, yeah, that was yeah. perfect. He stomped that. So Jude might have might just have put down one of the best runs we've seen today, if not the best run we've seen today from well, the 14-year-old. Well done, Jude. Yeah, I mean, everything top to bottom was super, super clean. The only thing you could critique, I mean, even getting the safety grab out of that rail, the only thing you could critique is a lot of safety grabs. However, I mean, he's putting down some huge rotations, and he is still super young. So, I mean, that's going to be a big score for Jude. Yeah, just a reminder, Jude is 14 years old. Yeah, And absolutely killing it. Blows one, my mind. One of the time. cleanest switched up 12s we saw all day as well. Very, very clean on that second jump. And three-way doubles, triple. I mean, it's going to be hard. It's going to be a hard run to beat. Absolutely. So up next, we've got bib number 84, Ty Cargus, representing Calgary Freeriders, hailing from Alberta. Yep, let's see it, Ty. That was my own attempt at an Alberta accent. I won't do it again. <laughs> well, I think, again, like... Same as Destin, we're going to see a little bit of time between the judges and the next rider because they're going to have to figure out where to put Jude. When you put down a run that good and you're challenging for a top position, it takes, uh, it takes a while for these judges to figure out where to put you. And, I mean, that's how you can tell it was a good run. I couldn't have said it any better myself, Bruce. Thank you. They're up there debating where to put him. <laughs> they're like, oh, my God. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, all, th all these riders are killing it, and Jude, Jude actually put down a banger, so... Okay, then we are into the last three riders of the day. This is the crunch time. This is medal time. 
Yeah. And we do know, like, some of the riders, like Malcolm, did not put down a good first run. So they'll be looking to stomp their second run. take this opportunity to thank all of our officials and judges you know we wouldn't be here without you all the event chairs the chair assist the technical delegate the head judges the chief of scoring the chief of competition all of these people go into making this event work so thank you so much to all of you and also big thank you to freestyle canada toyo tires the whistler blackcomb events crew again and whistler freestyle and the organizing committee for putting on such a great event thank you all so so much yeah Super amazing, and it's really cool to have live streaming and announcing at events like this for the viewers at home and these athletes to go back and watch the event. I know for me personally, it's very, very nice to be able to go back, watch my run, watch my performance, analyze it, and for all the parents at home, I know they appreciate it. So, Ty Cargus coming in. So, yeah, thank you to Freestyle Whistler for organizing the live stream. All right, on that first rail, switch to... Front swap back two, super, super clean, and a back swap front four. So Ty Cargus was one of the hardest rail sections up top we've seen all day. That first rail was really impressive. He's definitely trying to make a statement here with a huge left dub 10 mute grab, stomping it. Yeah, holding that mute out all the way at the nose of the ski. Yeah, it was really nice. And then a nice back four, maybe going for the tilt tap, maybe just trying to add some style, but keeping it clean coming into this second jump. And a huge switch up nine. Again, he's going big. The judges will, will reward these athletes for how big they go, the amplitude. And a massive dub 12 the other direction with the mute grab on that last jump. That was a really, really good run for Ty Cargus. Um, yeah, wow. Yeah, he's got to be happy with that one, right? Uh, absolutely, yeah. And again, like we are seeing somebody like Ty Cargus put down a very, very good run. Um, it's something to be challenging people like Jude and other guys in that top spot. One thing about Ty is... He is adding these different grabs like mute and very, very clean going big on these jumps. So, And, th I mean, the top technical section of those rails is definitely going to give him an advantage. However, again, we're not seeing him do quite as big a spins on the jump, but very, very clean and doing all way doubles, all three directions doubles. So top to bottom, very, very good run from Ty. Yeah, well done, Ty, putting it down. As we move into our final two competitors, next drop will be bib number 78, Mateus Heslop. Yep, and both these athletes have a great chance to shake things up here. Like, both very, very, very strong athletes, very strong riders. They know how to perform under pressure and, again, qualifying the highest. They have great runs. So if we, if we uh, rewind a couple years here, Bruce, would you have been competing against a couple of these guys when they were younger? When they were younger? Yeah, a couple of these guys. I competed against a couple of these guys a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> so <laughs> a couple of them, yeah, A couple for of them, sure. sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No. Um, and it's really, really cool to see uh, the next generation coming up and the people like Jude who are out here pushing it as well, keeping up to these other athletes that are competing on the Noram circuit. And, I mean, for sure we're going to see people like Jude and other athletes making that bump up over the next couple of years. Yeah, this is a great competition just to get everyone aware of sort of where the level they need to be at, right? You know, if you're a Canada Cup athlete, it gives you an opportunity to see what the Noram athletes are doing and scoring at. Yeah, and kind of, you know, see where you, you sit around in that... Uh, the Canadian slope style kind of field. Again, they're taking their time with the judging here um, because Ty Cargus did just put down an amazing run. Yeah, that's how you know it's a good run. If the judges are taking this long to decide on what the score is, then you know it's going to be, you know, it's difficult. Yeah, as an athlete, it's you're like, okay, like they liked it, but then you're also like nervous, like where are they going to put me? Yeah, what's my score? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But we do have live scoring, so these athletes are definitely checking their phones on the chairlift if they're anything like me, looking at those scores. That's what I would do. Um, but yeah, everybody's finishing off with really strong second runs. All right, Mateus Heslop with an amazing first rail on that top section and just not doing what he wanted to on that second rail. So maybe he was meaning to come out forwards out of that first rail because he has been hitting that second rail forwards. Yeah, just looking um, like he got a little hung up there on the rail itself. Yeah, but Mateus is somebody who's known for his jumps, and he's going to, I think he's still going to put down a, a show for us. I mean, just did a big, big 1440 on that first jump. So coming into jump number two, I believe we're going to see a switched up 12. Yeah, just like that. 
holding on to it. And the right 12 mute he did last lap, just having fun doing big 360. He knows it's not going to up his previous run score. So, As we just go back there and take a look at Mateus's third rail feature. Yep, super clean back four on his third rail feature. It was really the second rail feature that he just got a little caught up. I believe he wanted to come out of that first rail forwards, like I said. Um, he has been doing uh, back swap, front swap, back two on that second rail feature all day. And you'd have to come in forwards to kind of make that happen. All right, our last rider of the day is Malcolm Ferris. Bib number 21, uh, 29 from Nova Scotia. He has been killing it, and he's looking to put down his run for today. He didn't quite... He didn't quite get his first run down, so we're looking for him to stomp this second run and pull clutch under pressure as the last athlete of the day. Let's see what he can do. Malcolm Ferris coming into the first rail section. Making it through that first rail, maybe not 100% clean, but enough that it's not going to matter. And then back swap back to on that second Oh, the second ray, rail. get in tech with it. I like to see that. Yeah, definitely the most technical trick. Very hard to stop your rotation like that. Not the cleanest, but clean enough and holding the onto that blunt grab <laughs> yeah that dub 12 blunt was perfect and definitely the sickest dub 12 we've seen all day that's where he got hung up last time so the switch two back four on that second or last rail was perfect uh definitely one of the hard tricks and the switch dub 10 mute oh. oh no just not getting the landing gear down there unfortunately he loses his shoe in the landing yeah just not getting the um the rotation and the airtime he was looking for in that trick but a very difficult trick and a lot of style being thrown into Malcolm's run with the different grabs and different axes. Overall. But well done, Malcolm. For yeah. you know. Overall, well done, Malcolm. Well done. Yeah. well done to every single competitor that we've had there as he goes through the gate. Yeah, everybody absolutely killed it today. It was really, really cool to see uh, these riders throw down on this course with the bigger features, the bigger jumps, and uh, <laughs> everybody was really gunning for it. So congrats to all the riders in the comp. They absolutely crushed it. Yeah, absolutely. They've all done really well. Hand up for me. Um, yeah, what an event we've had here. Thank you so much to all of the event crew, the organizers, the volunteers, the committees, everyone involved. It takes a village to make these events go on. So thank you so much. So I'm just going to quickly run through all of our sponsors here. A big thank you to Thread for all of the lanyard sunscreen, lip balm, and everything they've given us. To Sunburn for the sunscreen, lip balms, and face sticks. To Toasty Supply, Beaver Wax, Blackfish Clothing, and Function Junction. Check them out. Best custom t-shirts and wears. Um, our prizing sponsor for providing a full core Gore-Tex kit for both men and women for the overall rider of the weekend. Big thank you to Head Sportswear. Yeah, and Nestor's Market for donating... Uh, all the food for volunteer lunches. I had a couple today. They were pretty dang good. And Hilton Whistler Resort and Spa for being a constant supporter of Freestyle Whistler over the years and for donating the comp office space for this event. It's absolutely beautiful over there. And it was amazing to go hang out with all the staff and pick up our stuff earlier today. Um, thanks to all the athlete t-shirt sponsors, Southside Lodge, Ride More, Spend Less at Southside, serving the tastiest breakfast and burgers in town. It's comfort food at its finest. In a fun, old-style diner. It's so good. Go. Super good. Mountain Kids Outfitters. Premium snow and bike gear for kids. Check it out. And McCoo's, your go-to spot for accessory, outerwear, lifestyle, clothing, and adventure at the base of Whistler Mountain in the heart of the village. Largest collection of goggles and helmets in Whistler. Go check them out. Yep. And Gibbons and Dublin Pub, where I will be heading after this. Uh, Gibbons Party People Places. It's what they do. Gibbons Whistler. It's always a good time. I'm there. Sometimes, often, it's a great time. And Dublin Gate Pub, the best apres in Whistler. That's where I will be. <laughs> yeah, Dublin's definitely a place I like to hang out after, especially in the sunny days. Super nice. And 122 West, huge supporter of Freestyle Whistler. Bringing Shout the out to Yeah, bringing the mountain coastal harmony to our home uh, with very nice home decor, furniture, and art, and giftware. All the competitors and their family will receive 20% off this weekend. And Airhouse, where all the athletes go to train. So, that is going to do it for us here. I just want to say a quick thank you to Bruce for joining me here. Your knowledge has been invaluable, and just thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, it's been an absolute blast. It was really, really fun to watch the event and help announce and see all these athletes kill it today. Okay, then. So, 
that is going to do it for us here at the Streaming Center for Freestyle Whistler. This has been the Canadian Senior Slopestyle event. Men and women, all day, we've seen some absolute hammers go down. It's been amazing. Thank you all so much for joining us here. I would just like to extend my apologies one more time to the females at the first runs that we didn't quite manage to get in there. We had a lot of communication issues which we managed to sort out in the afternoon. So again, my most sincere apologies for that. Thank you all so much for joining us here, and we will see you tomorrow for Big Air. That is right. We get to do all of this again tomorrow for Big Air. We will see you then. Have a wonderful evening. Take care.